Hello everyone, uh, I am Mert Kanyılmaz from Computer Engineering Department and today, before everything else, I want to ask you a question. When did we last send a human being to the moon? Well, if you don't know the answer, it was 1972 and it was 40 years. And why do you think we didn't send anyone else to the moon for 40 years? Um, well, if you're wondering the answer, you might find them here because today I'll be presenting you the two advantages of unmanned spacecrafts. And here is my outline. Uh, first, we'll be talking about the low-cost advantage, then we'll be further investigating the safety and the lifespan reasons behind these advantages. So let's start with the first one. Um, compared to the manned missions, unmanned missions are incredibly cheap. And to show you that, I'll first show you the development of these unmanned space vehicles in the f uh, last 40 years. And uh, this is Viking. Uh, Viking was the first one. It was launched in 1976 and it was big, it was immobile and it was not very useful but it made some scientific development. Then the spirit and opportunity came. They were much more mobile, more mobile, and, more mobile and they were something much better in terms of um, space and in terms of scientific development. And the QSATs. They were the, they are the future. They are these 10 centimeter cube satellites, and you can send the thousands of them. And even of them, half even if half of them were broken, you wouldn't care because 500 of them will be still working. And you can send a thousand human to the moon uh, and space because they will need food and any other thing. And to support my claim, now I will show some statistical information that I took from NASA's website. As you can see here. Uh, NASA estimates a total of $209 billion to the, uh, spend on the shuttle to the space. But Hubble uh, has only cost $10 billion for the last 25 years. It's an in incredible number when you compare those two. And why do we still have this prejudice against this case then? Well, Stephen Hawking from Cambridge University and very well known around the world has some idea on this topic. He stated that Robotic missions are much cheaper and may provide more scientific information, but they don't catch the public's imagination in the same way and they don't spread the human race into the space, which I am arguing should be our long-term strategy. If the human race is to continue for another million years, we will have to boldly go where no one has ever gone before. And he was right. People are not inspired by this data comes from Hubble, but they are inspired by this footprint on the moon. And people still think that. To show you that, uh, I took this chart from National Academic Press and let me explain you this chart. As you can see in the y-axis, we have the so, uh, public's person, uh, percentage of support and the x-axis, we have years. And in the purple ones, we see a slight decrease, which is something good because people start to think that shuttles are not that kind of useful anymore. But as we can see in the blue one, we have some kind of increase in the recent years and which is something bad. People st still think that moon landing was worth it. Maybe it was worth it, but we could have done it in a much cheaper way with the help of unmanned spacecrafts. Now I'm moving on to my second advantage. The risks of manned vehicles are just cannot be ignored. And to show you that, I will show you some of these risks. The bone damage. When you stay longer in the space, your bones become more fragile, you're more prone to the injuries. And this is very bad when you return to Earth. Radiation. Um, Earth has this atmosphere that protects us from this UV light, but in the space there is no such thing. Your suit protects you a little bit, but not that much. And risk of death. As you know, there is no equipment on Earth that's worth losing one of this crew. We already lost 18 people out there and we don't need to rise this number. And also, we need to use unmanned spacecrafts to protect these, to, uh, preserve this number. And also, let me continue with some more advantage. The lifespan. As you can see in this chart that I took from chartkick.com, the Voyager 1 was launched in 1977 and also there is some of them from 2004 and some more from the past. As you can see, they could stand, stand longer than 15 years, 20 years, maybe Voyager 1 was 40 years, but a human can stand there for more than a year, not even a year. So 
This is an incredible advantage in that case. And the repairability. Um, we can repair the closed unmanned, unmanned, unmanned space vehicles, as you know. Uh, Hubble was broken in 1998, and two astronauts were sent to fix it. Uh, here, this picture was taken there, two astronauts were fixing it, and they fixed it, they upgraded it, they made it even better. To conclude that what we have talked today, we have talked about the two advantages of unmanned space vehicle, um, which are the low cost advantage and the safety and the lifespan reasons. Um, we, we have to explore the universe and we need to do that fast. Um, there might be a sudden climate change, sudden nuclear war, everything can happen. And to explore the universe first, we need, unmanned, we need the help of unmanned space vehicles. Well, thank you all. Here are my references if you're interested. And if you have any questions, I would like to answer them. Mm -hmm.